Marie Windsor was an actress known for appearing in many classic films, including Stanley Kubrick's The Killing. Despite her beauty and talent, she never found a role that turned her into the big-name star she wanted to be. A big part of this was that she was considered a bit too tall compared to many of her male co-stars. Join Facts First as we explore how Marie Windsor's height was problematic next to her co-stars. Marie Windsor was born in a small town in Utah on December 11, 1922. She was the first of three children, though her youngest sibling wasn't born until she was already in her teen years. Marie excelled in school. What she lacked in math skills, she made up for in English, though she was particularly fond of both athletics and the arts. Marie was always taller than the other girls and grew to be a relatively impressive height of 5 foot 9. This height may have helped her out in school athletics, but ironically came to hinder the future star while pursuing her other childhood passion. In high school, there wasn't any kind of education in the arts available for the students, but Marie became versed in the arts by other means. She found favor with her school's principal, who believed she had a special talent. Though art wasn't a part of the curriculum, the principal passed along several art books to Marie that proved influential. They taught the young woman how to draw and paint, which were activities she became very good at. At home, she was also being supported in her affinity for the arts. As a child, she dreamt of becoming a Hollywood actress on account of her grandmother's passed-on love for silent films. Her parents paid for her to attend dancing and acting lessons, and they never balked at their daughter's dreams of striking it big in the entertainment industry. After attending two years at BYU, Marie decided she'd pursue her dreams of acting full-time. At the school, her dramatic talents were seen as being so proficient, she was given the chance to appear in plays with the older students. Marie's First Trip to Hollywood In 1940, Marie Windsor's parents drove her to Hollywood. There, she began taking acting lessons with a notable teacher named Maria Ospenskaya. During her early Hollywood days, Marie lived for a time at the Hollywood Studio Club, which was a sorority for the young women who were involved in the entertainment industry. She appeared on screen for the first time in 1941 in a film called All-American Co-Ed. During her first stint in Hollywood, she did a lot of work with RKO Pictures. She got to work with some notable stars including Lucille Ball, John Barrymore, and Donna Reed. Still, it began to seem as if much wasn't going to come of the actress's time in Tinseltown. She grew disenchanted with the industry and decided to take up an offer in the early 1940s to become a touring performer. In 1943, Windsor was asked by a touring vaudeville troupe to perform with them across the country. She reluctantly accepted, believing her time in Hollywood was over. Via her time with the troupe, Marie ended up out east. She spent some time in New York, and it was here that she was given the chance to get into radio. She found a good deal of success in the medium, and it may have seemed to her as if she'd found her calling. However, a second trip to the west, and eventually Hollywood's success, was beckoning. Marie's Second and More Successful Trip to Hollywood As she was finding massive amounts of success on radio, Marie was also finding parts on Broadway. It was through her work on Broadway that she was given a second shot at Hollywood fame. A talent scout for MGM offered Marie the chance to come back to Tinseltown, which she gratefully accepted. This time, she found a good deal more success than in her first venture to Hollywood. But despite critical acclaim, she never became the superstar she deserved to be. Back in Hollywood, Marie was put to work in the Clark Gable movie The Hucksters. Next, she appeared in the films Romance of Rosie Ridge and Song of the Thin Man. In 1948, she was given her biggest role yet, appearing alongside Angela Lansbury and Vincent Price in The Three Musketeers. All this was happening, but Marie was still having doubts about her future in Hollywood. Later in life, she recalled that she went to UCLA and took some aptitude tests in 1948. The goal was to see what careers, besides acting, the actress might be suited for. Thankfully, she ended up doing just fine in Hollywood over the course of the 1950s. In 1949, she appeared in a couple of films that garnered her some success. The first was Outpost in Morocco, and the second was Hellfire. Alongside the 1956 picture The Killing, which the actress appeared in later, Marie considered Hellfire to be one of her favorite films that she worked on. The critics and the public seemed to have similar views on the film, as it was a hit and rocketed Marie to more fame than ever. Marie found herself receiving attention in the tabloids. As Marie began to find fame in Hollywood, she also began appearing in tabloid magazines. She didn't mind being spotted on the town with prominent leading men, such as Clark Gable. However, the man she ended up settling down with was not someone she worked with in the entertainment industry. Instead, it was a realtor she was introduced to on a blind date. 
But before settling down with the love of her life, Marie had to do work in Korea. In the summer of 1952, she traveled overseas to visit soldiers fighting in the Korean War. She was one of many stars that formed a group known as the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This trip overseas helped the public fall in love with Marie even more. When she returned home, she appeared in 1953's The Tall Texan. 1953 was also the year that Marie got to appear on screen alongside John Wayne. She did this in Trouble Along the Way. Many of John's co-stars didn't enjoy working with him, but this wasn't the case with Marie. She held a high opinion of the late Wayne after working with him on the film, though it was another man who won over her heart a year later. In 1954, she was set up on a blind date with a man named Jack Hupp. Jack became her husband, and they stayed married until the actress's death. In 1956, she appeared in the Stanley Kubrick film The Killing. Around the same time, she appeared in a much less esteemed picture called Swamp Woman. Marie was so passionate about working on The Killing that she was prepared to storm off the set of Swamp Woman if the filming of that movie should try to conflict with the filming of Stanley Kubrick's noir. The actress's insistence on appearing in the picture paid off. Not only were her performance and the film received well critically, but the movie still stands today as one of her most well-known works. Sadly, things went downhill in her career after appearing in The Killing. Marie's height killed her career a big reason why Marie Windsor failed to become the superstar she always dreamed of being was that many of her contemporaries deemed her too tall. At 5'9", Marie either matched or exceeded the height of many of her male co-stars. This caused the actress to become insecure. This arguably didn't help out getting roles either. Another thing she was insecure about besides her height was her nose. In 1959, she underwent surgery to have her nose reshaped. In 1963, she and her aforementioned husband gave birth to their only child. As time went on, Marie continued to be a reliable presence on screen. In the 1970s, she appeared in a few live-action Walt Disney pictures. These included 1975's Apple Dumpling Gang, as well as 1977's Freaky Friday. In 1979, she appeared in the hit made-for-TV movie Salem's Lot, based on the novel of the same name by Stephen King. 1983 saw her receive her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Though Marie never got the star-making role she deserved during her long and enduring career in the entertainment industry, she was well-respected as a result of her talent and work ethic. Towards the end of her life, her health began to fail. In 1996, she lost the ability to walk after undergoing back surgery as a result of her severe arthritis. Before her death several years later, she was able to relearn how to stand up and move around with the help of a walker. She passed away from congestive heart failure in 2000, one day before her 81st birthday. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Marie threatened to walk off a film if it conflicted with the shooting schedule of The Killing? And that she got a nose job after appearing in the classic noir film? Let us know in the comments section below.